So in video 1403 we made this thing. We made this thing because it's my first ever rocket stove. It's portable, it worked really well and I loved it and it gets lots of really good feedback. Too many to mention really because it's such a, a lot of people who get good feedback. Apart from one guy, he's called Short Bus Life. You need to check out his channel because he made a permanent installation rocket stove that he basically glued an oven to and he uses that for heating his place and cooking his food. It's awesome actually, it's well worth seeing. But a lot of the advice has been to go with something called a J-tube. Now of course I didn't just order those bits, I also ordered a lot of other bits. So a J-tube looks like that. So we've got the same thing here where the air will feed here. We can drop our fuel here. This is the chimney and of course the whole thing is square. It being square is kind of cool because we can now put jackets and insulation around this really, really easily. So what we're going to do here is the same trick. We need to cut a hole in here so that we can feed the uh, fuel in, cut a hole in here so that the exhaust can come out, blank that off, and then put a drum around it. So this is the heart of the system. It's not yet a mass heater, but it is the heart of the rocket stove. Now, I've seen people or heard people put cover plates on here so they can put in the fuel flip it over. Apparently there is a golden ratio for this and that ratio is 1, 2, 4. So if this was 100 that would be 200, that would be 400. You keep that ratio and it's centre to centre from here to here to here. Keep that ratio and apparently that's really good. Again, no idea, it's what I've read, people seem to love it, so we're going to go with that and see how that works. Now I put this little extra bit on here to act as a draw, and other people have suggested nice suggestions. Put a flap on that so you can control or dampen the amount of air going in to control your fire. Can't put it here, you put it here it'll backflow, you put it here to reduce the air intake, and it'll change the burn rate. So really kind of cool. Like I say, our job, cut, weld. Now then, word about welding. You have to remember, about a year ago, I couldn't weld at all. Welding really is, is mostly one of those things that you pick up and give a go, and then you strictly, you're strictly actually surprised at how easy it is. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not easy to be a good welder. To be a good welder takes an awful lot of practice. But to weld up lumpy bits that will do the job, you can probably do in a week or two. Certainly my welding, which is not brilliant, is good enough to weld up projects like this. So if you're thinking about welding, then now's the time to pick up that welder and give it a go. And it really is mostly about being afraid of it. Now I've done a few videos on when I learnt to weld on the welding process. Check them out if you're thinking about welding, then give it a go. Make that step. Anyway, somebody actually suggested um, high temperature JB weld, which I thought was a good suggestion if you're still scared of welding. I just don't understand why you would be when all you've got to do is pick it up, give it a go and astound yourself how quickly you can make a mess of two bits of metal. However, you are <laughs> able to get one of these, in which case those messy lumps can be just cleaned off and it'll look lovely. So, give it a go. All right, here's enough of me preaching about welding. Let's mark this up and cut it out. Okay, that's the basic shape welded together. Now I've kept those ratios here and here. So that's 300 and that's 600 and that should be 150, which it's not. It's clearly bigger. I think it's about 250. Now I read loads of things and all those different things tell me that that really doesn't matter, okay? There's lots of advice on the size of the pipe as well with seven and eight inches being favored. I have no idea why. There's loads of things about gas flow and all that sort of stuff. But when I think about these things, these kind of flows in the chimneys, they, um, they vary between four inches and eight inches. So equally, I haven't got a clue whether that's important or not. And people tell me it is, and some people tell me it isn't. So I'm just going to try it and see. The other thing I thought was kind of cool was this. I read somewhere that put a lid on it so you get the same effect with it going through here. Don't put a lid on it and it makes no effect whatsoever. So who knows? I put a lid on it because this is essentially the same thing that we just made. Instead of coming out here for the camping stove, it comes out here. 
What that means is I can put lots of insulation around here, I can put a barrel around here, because what we're aiming for is this. Having this sort of arrangement is going to make it much easier to achieve that at the end of the day. Anyway, this is our bare stove and of course we're going to fire it up and give it a go and see what happens. Okay, that is doing its job. That's really hot actually. You can see it going blue here where it's getting hot. Uh, so we've got a blue and cherry red so we should be able to gauge the temperature from that. A little bit of smoke comes there when we get something pushing back. You see the flame is just beginning to lick up here because the idea of this one is to enclose it. Uh, now you might have noticed actually I was using the MIG welding gear instead of the arc welding gear. Uh, just playing around with it really and I'll probably do some videos on MIG welding when I get slightly less rubbish at it. Anyway, there is the heart of the rocket mass heater. So as a matter of interest, I tried blocking off this end here by putting a plate on there. It actually helped it to get going, but I found that the smoke would start to come out of here a little bit. So if I block that off, then the air direction is just going around there. And actually, it's working better. You can actually see the flames coming up there. So this port, I don't think it's strictly necessary. I mean, it's going to be handy as a cleaning port, so I certainly wanted something. If I put a door on there, maybe with a wheel and open and shut for a vent, then we can get some kind of damper control on that because that will damper control the intake air. Then, of course, we can always close that over as well. So, as a little aside there, that is worth putting a door on. Okay, it's had a chance to cool down. Now, those colours, incidentally, are uh, characteristic of steel, it goes from pale straw through a red to a blue to a light blue and tell you about what kind of temperatures. So this is getting up to about 400 degrees C or so. That's pretty good considering it was just out the side like that. So we're getting some temperature out of this thing. Now, they don't cost that much or take that long to make, so I'm loving the experimentation with it, actually. We are looking to do that mass heater, but a more permanent installation isn't on the cards yet. We're still looking at these as portable devices and how well they work. I mean, I've seen loads of arguments about these, but clearly that port is something that you want to be able to adjust so you can have an inlet and then close it up so when the thing gets going a bit. So it's quite a bit to learn from it, really, which is kind of cool. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.